Richards, who's been at Camp Kegel all night long. Doug. Well, there's been a lot of affection expressed here for Casey Cagle. Uh, 100 people probably at least still here, even though the Associated Press called this race for Cagle uh, about a half hour ago. Casey Cagle worked the room uh, at about 10.30 this evening after the AP called the race. Uh, he expressed uh, not only his prediction that he would prevail in the July runoff against Brian Kemp, but he also complimented Kemp uh, and Clay Tippins, one of the other Republican candidates for running uh, campaigns that he thought were noteworthy and were uh, uh, upbeat, uh, at least in the within the prism of uh, rough campaigns. So uh, we t managed to uh, talk with Casey Cagle just a few minutes ago about what it's going to look like when he faces Brian Kemp in the runoff in July. We are excited about the position that we're currently in. I mean, obviously, this was a very crowded primary. And to be, uh, you know, where we are right there at 40 uh, percent is, is really a, a special night for us. And, you know, going forward, we're going to continue to talk about the message. And Georgia is the number one place to do business in. And we don't have to sacrifice our conservative uh, values in order to accomplish that. And Kegel acknowledged that uh, it's possible that the next eight weeks or so may get a little rough as he and Brian Kemp, the Secretary of State, go head to head to win the Republican gubernatorial nomination. Let's go to Athens, Georgia, where our man John Sherrick is with the Brian Kemp campaign. John, how you doing? Brian Kemp is already on the attack, telling cheering supporters here just a few minutes ago that Casey Cagle is the career politician who is the uh, candidate for the special interests. Now, Kemp has been in his war room, as we see in this video, with his family and the campaign staff, analyzing the numbers as the vote returns have come in county by county all across the state, analyzing where his strengths are in Georgia, where Casey Cagle's strengths are. Kemp is confident that the upcoming two-person race between him and Cagle will help voters focus that Kemp is the fighter for them and that Cagle is simply the fighter for those with deep pockets. He twisted every arm at the state capitol he could find, and he lashed out at anyone who wanted to challenge his ascent to power. And still, the vast majorities of hardworking Georgians rejected Casey Cagle tonight and those who own him. The way Brian Kemp sees the number, 62% of the voters today voted for somebody other than Casey Cagle, and Kemp is going to try to turn that around in his favor. Vinny. All right, John Sherrick in the midst of all the noise tonight. Let's get a little perspective on all this. Jeff Hollinger joins us now. And, Jeff, let's talk about turnout tonight. What sort of impact or what should we read into all that tonight? I spent the night with Vincent Fort, and we were talking about these kinds of issues tonight. He was a supporter of Stacey Evans against Stacey Abrams. But he says, look, the Democrats have their hands full by November because they're about 150,000, 175,000 voters short as has been historically the case in the state. Mike Hassinger, who is a Republican uh, strategist, he was with us tonight, and he made this point, that, uh, you know, the state agriculture commissioner is, is running tonight unopposed. He has more votes than Evans and Abrams combined. Unopposed? More mm -hmm. votes? Wow. Wow. So... Is that, is, that a, is that a real problem for Democrats? Is that a huge hurdle? Uh, you, you know, Vincent Fork believes that it is. He thinks that it is going to be a very, very difficult hurdle for them by November. But, you know, it's a long way to go. It's Historic to night for Stacey Abrams, but you, what you're telling me is she has her hands full to get people out to vote. We'll find out. We'll find out, certainly. All right, Jeff Hollinger, okay. appreciate it. Thanks so much.